16, and I'm joined by Jordan Maxwell. That's why it's a special edition. Hello, Jordan. How are you? Well, I think, okay. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> well, Jordan, I, I tell you, I was scared because I heard that you had a heart attack and you know, you were the last guest I had on the show. You're my favorite guest, actually, to have on. <laughs> I haven't had a guest in like in months because well, you're my favorite sure. guest to have on. So when I heard that, I was I was literally heartbroken. But you sound good. You sound real good, man. Well, I'm feeling a little bit better. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a close call, but I'm still here. So. Sound tough as nails as usual. Tough as nails, and you know we're we're covering a a very very tough topic, and the topic of today's show is esoteric Saturn mystery explained and who better than to explain this than you right Jordan well I kind of I guess introduced this idea yes because I don't recall ever seeing anyone talking about it until oh, I don't know 10 years ago or so I did a series of articles on Saturn maybe it was even 15 years ago now time passes so fast but uh, right I did a few articles and I did a video and I started doing some radio shows 10 to 15 years ago on the planet Saturn. And though at that point, I had never heard anyone talking about it. Uh, and I kind of follow all the researchers around the world. And um, and now, of course, it's everywhere. Right. But you were a pioneer. And it's funny that you say time, because that's exactly what Saturn represents. People yeah. don't know that Saturn also represents Kronos, which is Father Time. Yeah, well, that's where we get the word calendar. Kronos, calendar time. Wow. Yeah. Really? And and also the, the phrase, the dawn of a new day. That's a, <laughs> that's a phrase that they use, and that is literally Saturn worship as well. Of course, yeah. And uh, the, all the, uh, it's a big story about uh, Saturn and how it impacts our politics in America, but all over the world. It's the same thing everywhere. Communism uses the symbols, yes. Nazism uses them, fascism uses them. Almost every country in the world uses the Saturnian symbol. Planets, right. uh, you know, the planet Saturn's astronomical and astrological symbolism. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's interesting when you start looking at this stuff for the first time and see how for thousands of years government's been using the astrological and astronomical symbols for Saturn in their national coats of arms, the heraldry of the royalties of Europe, and uh, my God, it's everywhere. And most people have never even heard such a thing. Right, no, they're not aware, and the thing is with me, I mean, what was the moment of like a quantum leap in consciousness for me was, I mean, just looking at, at the symbolism that surrounds me everywhere. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough to have mentors like you that opened my mind to this, but now I see it everywhere. I mean, the, tar the Target logo, that's Saturn symbolism. Everywhere. Right? Harley, Harley Davidson, I mean, the Bentley, Chrysler, Nissan, and then the Toyota. I have a Toyota. And even that is Saturn symbolism. But then here's where it gets darker, Jordan. As you know, the, the Toyota symbol also kind of looks like a Baphomet symbol. Well, That's guess right. what? The Baphomet, well, it represents Saturn as well, right? Yeah, and so Saturn is actually uh, connected to so many of the ancient gods. And yes. So, uh, David, uh, what was his name? David... Uh, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, he wrote the book on the, on the Saturn, David Talbot. Hmm. T-A-L-B-O-T-T, -T, I think it is. David Talbot wrote the book called The Saturn Myth. <clears throat> and that was many years ago. And when I first come across that book, uh, it, it, it really moved me to contact him. And I ended up being uh, in, in his company. I ended up helping him finance some of his big projects for him. Nice. And I even uh, hosted a science conference in Portland, Oregon for him. And uh, so Saturn has become very important all over the world. And to show you how it's interwoven into our lives that we don't even know it, the Jewish religion, Judaism, is based on the worship of Saturn. Uh, Islam has a Saturnian, Saturnian symbols all over it. Right, right. The Kaaba, the Kaaba in uh, Saudi Arabia, the Kaaba. Yeah, right, that cube, that cube from Mecca. Also, what the yeah. tefillin, right? The, yeah, the yeah. wrap. All has to do with the planet Saturn, and uh, so when you see the Arabs run, and the Muslims uh, marching around the, the the black square of called uh, Mecca, right? Uh, that's Saturnian. That's Saturn. Wow. Uh, yeah, and then when you see kids growing, uh, uh, getting out of college and high school, and then graduating with the 
square Marshall board and the tassel. That's a center and uh, symbol. And uh, black robes. Um, <coughs> So there's just so much that is Saturn, and, uh, but, but people don't know that. So, again, I think the most interesting and the most important is the uh, ancient worship of Saturn, how it has been the foundation for Judaism, and ultimately for the, out of Judaism, uh, for Christianity and, uh, and Islam. And Saturn can be traced all the way back into Hindu, because, and here's another point, the... Uh, the, the Jewish religion, Christianity, and Islam, all three are based on a mother religion. All three are based on another religion, which is Hindu. Right. So the Hindu religion is the basis for Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. That's where and, you also get the, the Trinity, right, Jordan? That, uh, yeah, like uh, in Hinduism, right. you have Brahma, Vishnu, right? That's right. And it's that's the, right. the same, so the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So in Hindu, it's Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Yes. In Egypt, it was Osiris, Isis, Horus. Christianity is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And Judaism is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, none know, of those people ever lived. There was no Jesus who ever lived. There was no Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. Right, it goes back. I mean, what, Addis from the Greek yeah. times had the same story. Dionysus had the same story. You go back, yeah. and you yeah. go back in the ancient timeline, you see all these historical figures or deities had the same history, the same pattern. But Jordan, you know, scientists have looked at Saturn and they see that there's some type of hexagram from within Saturn. I mean, like Saturn itself from within is a hexagram. Yeah, well, even at the North Pole of Saturn is a hexagram, uh, a six-pointed hexagram, and uh, that's at the North Pole. And just go on the web, you don't have to be too meticulous, just go on the web and type in uh, hex on Saturn, or Saturn's hex, H-E-X, hex. Because a hex is a, is a six-pointed star, and you will see from uh, you know the space uh, probes that uh, that we've sent out takes pictures of the planet Saturn up close, and you will see on the north pole of Saturn is a hexagram. Right. Another and, thing uh, I wanted to uh, it, right. you know the, the ancient ahead. Babylonians used to draw a, a, a circle on the ground, and then inside the circle draw a triangle, and then invert another triangle. So you got two triangles. Uh, inverted inside of a circle. Hmm. Well, that's the uh, Star of David inside of a circle. Right. But, then, but then the priest would stand inside of that Star of David or that hexagram and cast spells on people, and that's where we get the idea of putting the hex on you. Amazing. So today, the Jews are walking around all over the world with a hex on them. And, and who put that high. hex? Who put that hex on them? It was it was the Germans no. before the the Battle of Prague. It was uh, the Visigoths that uh, appointed the hexagram to uh, Judaism, because, I mean, historically, Jordan, I mean, the menorah has always represented Judaism. Of course, of course, of course. The, 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 the hexagram has never represented Judaism. No, oh, it is a complete evil symbol. I mean, you said it yourself, a sorcerer would literally stand in, in it, and the demons, or, I mean, it goes back to the, the Goetia. I mean, it, it, is, it is so incredibly evil. I mean, the, the, the power that some of these uh, uh, just sorcerers possess, and they belong to a cult called... Uh, the, the Brotherhood of Saturn, right? That's right. It's called the Brotherhood of Saturn. Wow. And, uh, and the book, many books have been written about it. A lot of people now have done a lot of good research on it. You just go on the web and just type in Brotherhood of Saturn. And there's a lot of good stuff. But there's one book in particular that is very good on it. It's written by a Professor Flowers mm. and, uh, from uh, uh, Texas University. Flowers is his last name. And he's written the, the definitive work, I think, the definitive work on the planet Saturn as a religion. Right. And um, he talks about the Saturnian Brotherhood, <clears throat> the German Saturnian Brotherhood, which gave birth to the, uh, to the basically to the Nazi party and Hitler's Saturnian symbolism in his uh, Nazi... Hey, the Nazis adapted everything from the Jesuits. That's why when you mentioned earlier the, the hammer and sickle being a representation of Saturn, I mean, you have the IHS... The eye, in particular, representing Saturn. Yeah, so, you know, like I said, uh, and incidentally, too, another one that's very, very telling is uh, Saturn in the old Phoenician language. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we call that old Phoenician language, we call it Hebrew. But there is no such a thing as Hebrew language. It's a misnomer. But it's like everything else that we believe. We, we don't know. We don't do any research.
research. So we're told that the uh, that we have a Hebrew language, but it's not Hebrew at all. It's a Phoenician Canaanite language, which the Hebrews speak. And so, since the Hebrews speak that language, we call it Hebrew. No, it's not Hebrew. It's Phoenician Canaanite language. But in the old Phoenician Canaanite mis uh, misnamed Hebrew language, um, Saturn is referred to as uh, Sabbath, as Shabbat. Like and the candles. S H A B B A T H. Shabbat. Like the like the candles, man. Right? Well, yeah. But like and the so, Shabbat, Shabbat candle. Shabbat. That's right. And so uh, Shabbat is Saturn in the Phoenician language. And so therefore, if you're wow. going to worship Saturn or Shabbat, you do that on Saturn's day. Uh, Saturn's day is called the Sabbath. Not Sabbath, Shabbat. And so today we have Christians and Jews keeping holy the Sabbath, never ever realizing Sabbath is Shabbat, and Shabbat is Saturn. What about Saturday? Well, I'm saying that this is why the right. Jews still worship Shabbat or Saturn on Saturn's day. Right. Saturn day or Saturday. And so that's why the Jews go to temple right. on Saturday. The very word temple, uh, meaning house of El. Temple means the house of El. Well, in the old ancient languages in the Middle East, another word for the planet Saturn was El, E-L. And so the house of El, or the Temp El, uh, was the house of worship of El, or the worship of Saturn. Wow. And, uh, you know, so when you start looking into the, uh, the actual beginnings of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and see how it's all related to the old ancient religion coming out of the Hindu, right. and then you look at the symbols where the, old, the gods, like in Hebrew, the, one of the main gods, Yahweh, and and he's standing with a uh, circle around him. The Jews in Hollywood today are still making movies, uh, you know, about their God. We we go to movies and not realizing. Well, that's today what I would are say I would say it's more like the Nazis in Hollywood that pretty much discovered Rustic Canyon, like we talked beforehand as well. I mean, yeah. we don't even know who the true Jews really are. I mean, it's like the I synagogue know, yeah. of Satan. I mean, the Nazis had this breeding program, and you don't know if the if they have a uh, Mischling or Lebensbar, I mean, it's it's yeah, literally ridiculous. But you know, you mentioned you mentioned the word El and how it was referred to Saturn, and right there you have Elo Elohim and Elite. That's right. That's where you get words like that. That's right, and uh, and then you you understand that in Egypt they had the worship of Isis. Right. A long time ago, there was the worship of a female deity called Isis, which was spelled I S I S. Horus's mother. Yeah, and that's what we hear even a lot of today about uh, you know, terrorist organizations. Oh, and where is it happening, Jordan? Where is it happening? In France and Père Isis. That's right. That's what they're and, they, and, and, and the people don't even see it. They don't care. They're too stupefied playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> they don't care about these things. Well, again, that's important that the very word Paris, if you look up the etymology of the city of Paris, it will tell you originally uh, that city was Pair. Isis, P-A-R, then I-S-I-S, Paraisis. Then they dropped one of the I-S and just made it Paris. But it's Paraisis. And, uh, anyway, it, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a hell of a story about how so many religions and government symbols and seals and words and terms of religions are all based on the planet Saturn. Oh, I mean, the corporate world alone, Jordan, I mean, we mentioned the Target logo, I mean, cars like Nissan, Chrysler, Toyota... I mean, even yeah. even the car, the car company Saturn has uh, <laughs> it's called Saturn, and, and it, even your girlfriend's handbag. You buy her a handbag, the Chanel logo. That's Saturn worship, and it, it's proliferated through through the media with these pop bubblegum artists. You got your of Lady course. Gaga's, you got your Beyonce's wearing these these big Baphomet rings. I mean, the jewelry, the attire, all meant to praise Saturn. I mean, even Madonna dedicated a Super Bowl to Saturn. <laughs> I know, I know, it's quite a. And, you know, Saturn was uh, also referred to as the inhibitor. One of the, one of the traits of the god uh, and, and the planet, the planet and the god named Saturn, one of the traits of that god, which is also one of the astrological traits of the planet, is that uh, the god was the inhibitor, one who inhibits you, one who holds you back. And so, therefore, uh, 
Saturnian institutions, Saturn's institutions, uh, we can say are the military, the police department, the mafia, uh, the sheriff's department, government, any, any organization or institution which has the power to put you in jail or kill you or, you know, or, or hold you back and hold you down uh, wow. and keep you from doing what you want to do as a Saturnian. That's Saturn, the inhibitor. And so the ancient, uh, uh, the ancient people we call the Hebrews realized that Saturn was the inhibitor or one who holds you back. And so they decided that on the day that they worshipped Saturn, they would do nothing. So they called it uh, the Sabbath, which wow. again comes from Shabbat. But the point I'm making is that the Jews do nothing on Sabbath. They don't do much of anything. Yeah, I, I pretty much just hang out on that day. <laughs> That's right. But the, but the reason why is because Saturn was the inhibitor. Wow. And if he's going to inhibit you, meaning if he's going to hold you back and not let you do this, he's not going to let you do that, he's going to hold you back and teach you a lesson, uh, then the Jews said, well, if he's going to hold us back, why don't we just do nothing? You know, you know, Jordan, Saturn's starting to remind me of my parents. They yeah. kind of, they were kind of inhibitors. You know, with, with a name like well, that, I mean, Saturnian power. don't they call Saturn also the, the Dark Lord or the Dark sure. Sun or the Black Sun or the, the Lord of the Rings? I mean, ugh, that's... Lord of the Rings. Get, you get that movie from there as well. I know. That's why women wear wedding rings and men get, get married wearing a wedding ring and women wear the... Uh, ear rings, Lord of the Rings, it has to do with the planet Saturn. So when women are wearing ear rings, they are showing respect for their god, Saturn. Wow. So, like I said, people wear rings all the time, never realizing where the ring, the idea of the ring comes from. You know, it comes from the Lord of the Rings, Saturn. Absolutely. They call Saturn the red planet. And then let's just break down some words here. Uh, Saturn is the red planet. And then Saturn, you have Satan, you have Saturnalia. Of Satanism, you have Santa wearing red. <laughs> so yeah. It's all there. Yeah. If you just take the word Santa, S A N T A, and move the A and the, and the T, it becomes Satan, S A T A N. Wow. It's the same five letters Satan, Santa. But then when you get into that connection with Santa and Satan, that takes you back to the Old Testament of the Bible and to Isaiah 14, 14th chapter of Isaiah. Uh, 14, 12 through 14, where it talks about, oh, how you have fallen from heaven, you son of the dawn. Um, and you have you have said, the scripture says that Satan or Lucifer or the, the, uh, or the evil one has said in his heart, I shall go up into the uttermost reaches of the north, and I shall be like the most high. And so this is why Santa comes from the north pole, because the scripture says in Isaiah 14, 12, that uh, that Lucifer will go up into the north, and wow. so the, you know, so there's all kinds of connections like that, and you know, all of these things are all connected behind the scenes, and it's just a very big story. It is a big story, Jordan, and it's right in front of the people's face in eye symbolism, from the CBS yeah. eye to just eyes in general, to the Masonic eye, you know, the yeah. to the Masonic compass, to the to the pillars, Jacking and Boaz that hold up that planet. I mean, it's all Saturn symbolism. Well, even those uh, two lights that are shining in New York in honor of the World Trade Center, right. the World Trade Center itself were two identical buildings, and uh, they represented Jack and Boaz, but most people don't know that. This is why all over the world, just go on the web to, uh, go on the web to uh, image, where you get nothing but pictures, just image. And type in the word uh, Twin Towers. Twin Towers. And you will see hundreds, if not thousands, of buildings around the world in every country, especially churches and, and cathedrals, where they all have twin identical towers. Everywhere in the world are t twin towers. Why? Because it represents Jack and, and Boaz. Now, that's another whole incredible connection behind the scenes. Uh, to religious symbolism and architecture all over the earth. So there's, there's always been a connection behind the scenes of all things connected, you know, government, religion, architecture, theology, commerce, banking. It's all one big game, and they use the symbols in banks. They use the symbols that you see in commerce. 
and religion. It's, a, it's an extraordinary story of betrayal of the human race. Uh, but people have no idea what I'm talking about. Most people have never heard of such a thing. Well, this this audience, fortunately, Jordan, I've tried to build an audience that's as aware or even more aware, believe it or not, than us. You know, I really respect my audience. I, that's why I, I love having you on because you're so informative. You're you're one of the wisest people I've ever had the pleasure of speaking to on the Bruce Montalvo show. I appreciate it. It's nice of you. Uh, uh, it's not true. I'm just an ordinary person. But, right. But okay. uh, I just do what I do and whoever's supposed to hear me will and whoever's not supposed to won't. So I just do what I do and see where it goes. But incidentally, in relation to what I do, I was I was told quite a long time ago. I finally did something about it. That um, when when you're talking, there are two there are two of you. There's uh, you need to understand that there's two of everything, and there's two of you. There's a private you and a public you. And the private you is between you and I. If we're out having a beer in a, in a, in a restaurant somewhere, just you and I. And whatever whatever deal we make between the two of us, nobody in the world's going to know but you and me. That's called the private side. That's a private thing between two people. But, and so if you are, say, in a, in a, in a church or a group, uh, and I'm using this uh, as an example, like the clan, Ku Klux Klan, you can say anything you want about anybody you want, uh, no matter what it is, no matter how bad it may sound, you can say anything you want because you have a right of freedom of, of speech. As long as you say it in your church, where where it's just your people hearing you, as long as you say it in your club or in your private little group, wherever your group is, you can say whatever you want in that group because that's private and you are protected with private speech. Hmm. But when you take your but well, when you take your speech and take it out onto the public and putting it on the web and talking the same way you would talk in your church or to your club, now that's different. The government now is empowered to protect the public. Therefore, when if you're using all kinds of foul language, which you can do if you're in private association, but if you start talking about other people that are using all kinds of profanity in the public, now the government has uh, the, the right to come in and do whatever it wants to. Well, like an NDAA, you, you know, it's like Clint Eastwood said. I, I heard him say this the other day, That <laughs> and, and, and bear with me here. Clint Eastwood said the other day that we literally have a pussy generation now. Yeah, yeah. But it's well, it's true. completely true. Completely true. The PC... But the point, yeah, but here's the point right. I was making about this, is that I have realized that I've gotten myself in trouble in the past talking about things publicly uh, that can get you, uh, you know, can get you in trouble, telling people things they're not supposed to know. Right. And so I was advised by uh, some lawyer friends of mine to, if you're going to say things and present things which are very controversial... You better do it in a private, uh, private way, not in a public way, because certain documents and pictures and things that I would like to say in the public can get me and, and, and other people in trouble talking about something that the public is not supposed to know about. And so I have decided to uh, put take my work. I'm leaving everything out there that I've done over the years. It's too late to, to you know privatize that. Right. So everything I've done over the years is still out there for free, but. I have uh, created a new website, which is on my uh, on my website. My my only legitimate website is Jordan Maxwell Show. Any other website that has my name on it is not mine. It's Jordan Maxwell Show is my website. I saw the legal letter you sent me, and it's it's truly a uh, I mean a, a battle you're having in, in courts of your intellectual uh, your intellectual property. Yeah, of course, of course, and. Uh, and so, anyway, um, I'm getting other phone calls now. Tell them you're on the tell them you're on the greatest show on alternative media. I have a, uh, my my website is jordanmaxwellshow.com, and uh, on that website, it's a free uh, it's a free um, podcast. But on that website, I have another website which is private, and it's called uh, the Research Society website. Research Society. So if you go on jordanmaxwellshow.com, you will see a button that says to join the Research Society. All that is is just another website that I have put out there now that's a private. You have to join the Research Society. Right, and yeah. they get to have exclusive, maybe one-on-one -on -one talks that's like true. I'm having with you, breaking down 
just, just crazy esoteric topics like this with literally a, a esoteric researcher, a scholar, I mean, one of the best in the field, Jordan Maxwell. Well, that's exactly what I've done. I've put all of my stuff, I haven't even begun, I mean, it's, it's enormous now, but I haven't even begun to upload everything. I'm just doing a little bit every day, but I'm putting up pictures and documents and articles and audio and video and all kinds of research materials on all kinds of controversial subjects. And I'm, little by little, I'm downloading and uploading all kinds of research materials. Um, a lot of it is just controversial. Some of it's very, very controversial. Right. And so I'm doing that on a private uh, website called Research Society. So go on my website to Jordan Maxwell Show, and you will see a button that says join the, you know, join the Research Society website. Uh, join it. Click yeah. on it. Join. Absolutely. People got to support your work. I mean, I've supported your work. The books, great books like uh, Matrix of Power. I mean, you have Symbols, Sex, and the Stars. I mean, just amazing work like that. You, you will speak to people exclusively in the research society. Yep, that's it. I'm putting, I'm putting out all kinds of stuff I would never put on a, on a regular website. I'm putting it. So I don't care. Now, if somebody takes something I put on my research society website, they take it, take it public. That doesn't hurt me because it wasn't me that did it. So if the government's going to come out to somebody, it will come out to whoever put that material out there. But it's not going to come out to me because I only put it on a private basis. So uh, just know that all the good stuff is going to be on the private side, on the private. Uh, it's called research society. All the juicy esoteric talk. Anyway, yeah, we, we, were of of, of, we were speaking of matrix of power. And I, I want to get back to Saturn because Saturn to me is a, is a matrix of power. That ring around Saturn, I mean, I, I, want, I don't want to sound like Socrates here, but could it represent literally like the sands of time? Yeah. Um, you know, but, but Saturn also, uh, there's a lot more to that, that planet. I mean, first of all, what what are the rings? What? Why are there rings? Why are there rings around Saturn? We now know, some of the things we do know for sure, is that the rings around Saturn are artificial. Somebody has made them. They were artificially wow. made. And we now know, because we've got pictures when the, uh, when the space probes pass, went past Saturn taking pictures, uh, we now have pictures of a spaceship that is creating a new ring. And the ring is like 99% done. Uh, and, the, and the ship itself, which is creating that ring, is almost finished with it. It's got a little bit more to go, and then it will be completed, that ring. But that spaceship that we have pictures of, uh, that's creating that, that most recent ring, is estimated to be at least 3,200 miles wide. One ship the size of, uh, from Los Angeles to Maine, 3,200 miles wide. And this ship doesn't belong to NASA, definitely, right? The Nazis no, over no, in NASA. No, it does not belong to NASA. And NASA, any, any NASA itself... Na the United States is not, does not belong to NASA. NASA, NASA itself, the logo for NASA is Saturn worship as well. Yeah, I know, I know. So but, anyway, yeah. uh, I, I just a lot of interesting stuff out there about the planet Saturn, about religion, and of course how Saturn is the basis for our laws and our institutions and our, you know, educational system, our universities and colleges are based on Saturn. Right. And when you graduate, you come out with a black square mortarboard and, and black robes. I also, black heard you, I also heard you say that when you, uh, you go through school and you basically, you go through their system, right, their education, and you become alumni, eliminated. Yeah. And so, I mean, they yeah. got all, all the words are there, but I want to talk about the rings again. I mean, could it be some type of frequency band that I mean, you said there's some type of ship? I, I can't wrap my round my eye, <laughs> my mind around a, a huge ship creating the, the rings of Saturn. Literally, I mean, you told me it's a ship's creating a ring around yeah, Saturn. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the book. See, I talked with the NASA scientist who wrote that book. Wow, and uh, he's a good, he's a dear friend of mine. But uh, he's uh, pretty much dropped out of society after writing that book. He, he talked about something he wasn't supposed to, and uh, and. NASA is very, very unhappy with him. But it's those very, that, very uh, that ring, that ring, Jordan. I mean, could it be some type of frequency band? I mean, is it is it like a space time continuum? I mean, 
Now, you, you said earlier in the show, and this intrigued me, that there's two two versions of, of oneself. I mean, there's the public and private, but then there are also those that say that we're living in an artificial reality, and a lot of it a lot of it has to be uh, a revolve around a Saturn and possibly this this ring around Saturn. Yeah, well, I mean, I've heard scientists uh, I've talked to in private mentioned uh, some interesting concepts about the ring around Saturn. Uh, there has been some, uh, one school of thought is that that ring represents a a, a, uh, a dish, like a communication dish, an uplink to a satellite. Wow. And, uh, and that dish uh, is an electromagnetic dish that, that can send and receive uh, you know, frequencies from deep space, from you know, thousands of light years away, uh, and because it's a huge uh, dish, and when it when it rotates, and, and that dish is just in the right spot at the right moment, you know, it can pick up signals from thousands of light years away. So it may possibly be some kind of a dish that is picking up frequencies throughout the universe. Maybe it's some kind of a communication uh, dish. That uh, you know, because we see those big dishes, right? At, you know, television stations, etc. Well, maybe that that uh, circle around Saturn is itself a dish. And that's why Saturn. symbols are so important because symbols are transmitting that frequency, and they represent Saturn. So it's literally putting you on the frequency of Saturn. Of course, yeah. Wow. Right. And uh, so, like I said, I mean, it's in religion, it's in movies, it's in commerce, it's in banking, government, education, corporate world. Corporate, corporate world, especially in the military. Everything in the military is Saturnian. Oh, yeah, the, the patch. I mean, if, yeah. if you look at the, the Chevron, the gas station, it has the, the same military kind of Vs, those two yeah. Vs, military Vs. Is, and then if you look, I've I seen uh, on an on a air, air bunker for, for the military. There's the, yeah. they, they have uh, the, the logos of Saturn. I mean, they got a big red planet and then an eagle flying over it and a star. And even the, the phoenix, the ancient phoenix. Uh, the Egyptian phoenix the yeah. represents the, the eye of Ra. It has that. That is Saturn worship. I know. Well, again, Saturn is a very important planet. It's the uh, it's the inhibitor. It's the uh, it's the one that the, the Jews worship today. Of course, the Jew the Jewish religion has uh, has quite an interesting history. Uh, first of all, what you need to understand about the Jewish religion it is not, and I repeat, Judaism is not. A B C religion. Judaism was developed. The whole idea of the Jewish religion was developed uh, a few hundred years ago, not thousands of years ago. We know there was no ancient Israel, and today some of the best minds in, in the state of Israel, some of the best professors and, and, uh, and historians in Israel, are writing books now and talking publicly about the fact that. Israel, the ancient Israel of the Bible, never existed. There was no ancient Israel. There was no Moses. There was no Abraham. There was no, no none of those, uh, you know, people in the Bible ever existed. But there's a doesn't mean the Bible is of no value. I'm just saying historically. Well, it depends what Bible you're reading. I mean, I I would read the uh, the Old Testament, the Torah. I mean, yeah. I, I I wouldn't trust anything uh, the King James wrote, man. <laughs> well, I know, but. Uh, <laughs> Lots of people don't know that the uh, Judaism is not an old religion. Judaism was probably first put together uh, probably in the 9th century A.D., 9th, 10th, 11th century A.D. There was no B.C. There was no ancient Israel, period. It never existed. Just a story. Uh, and that's why the Bible's called the greatest story ever told. It's just a story. Well, they, they get the time period mixed up. They say Ramses was uh, the one who caused the, the Jews to leave Egypt. When Ramses, well, that whole story of uh, you know is is basically um, kind of a fable, just like Christmas. Of course, you know, it uh, just like it. uh, I mean, Jesus is fables. Jesus is really the representation of Mithra. We've talked about this oh. before. Many other deities. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, the the, the major religion in the Roman Empire. When Christianity first began, the major religion that was already there, Rome wasn't waiting for Christianity to form. Rome already had a religion. And, uh, and so when Christianity came along, uh, the major religion in uh, Rome at the time was called Mithraism. And uh, Mithraism was the story of the sun right. in the sky. 
And so the son, they said, the Romans said that the son obviously does not belong to you. It doesn't belong to Africans or Chinese or anybody else on the earth. It doesn't belong to us. So the Romans asked the question, well, who owns the son? Well, obviously, if you believe in God, well, then you can say God owns the son. Well, then that thing that comes up in the morning is God's son, not yours. And so God's Horace. son... So Horus, right? Uh, God's God's son would be uh, Horus, Horus, yeah. which also kind of sounds like ours, which again, uh, the the sands of time, of Father Time, Kronos. It's all interwoven. Horus is H O R U S. Ours is H O U R S. Right. I just think it's kind of it, similar. It, you you see like a subliminal thing going on there. Horus, ours, ours. Yeah, I know. But uh, I'm just saying that the idea was and the. The uh, old Roman religion is that Mithra was God's son, the light of the world. Of course, the sun is the light of the world. But what else lights the world if it's not the sun? And so the sun in Mithraism, the sun had 12 helpers. That was the 12 signs of the zodiac of the 12 months of the year. Right. So now you've got God's son with his chosen 12. Right, which could represent the summer solstice. Actually, it does represent the summer solstice, the, the Templar uh, cross. I mean, again, it, it's kind of hard to, to figure out if it's Saturn worship or, or sun worship. But then also you have the way that the, the sun would uh, would sit or, or the way Saturn would sit that it kind of looks like it had a little beard or something. So that you see no, in all no. these religions, men are wearing the beards and it is Islam and in uh, Judaism, they, they have the beards. Again, e even having a beard could be Saturn worship. Yeah, well, and, yeah, because it's used in all the worship of Saturn, and the men wear I mean, beards. God, but, uh, God has a beard, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, it's just uh, it's just very interesting religion theology. And my God, we could talk about theology all night long on stuff that people have no idea in the world. Absolutely. I mean, how many people are going to church and never realize where the word church really comes from? What it means. Uh, and it would shock you when you find out what the word church really means, where it came from. Uh, you said the Scottish word, it was Kirk. That's right, Kirk. K-E-R-K or K-I-R-K, -K, either way. Right. Kirk, so if you're a Christian and you're living in Scotland on Sunday morning, you're going to Kirk, which is like Captain Kirk on the good ship Enterprise, remember on Star Trek. That's right. Kirk is Scottish for church. In England, as church, spelled C-H-U-R-C-H. But church comes from a Scottish word, Kirk. And so that's why you have Captain Kirk on the good ship Enterprise. Because that's what that's what a religion is. It's a company. It's a corporation. It's an enterprise to make money. All right, even the logo, Anuit, I mean the logo on the on the dollar bill, Anuit Coeptus. It yeah. means uh, in enterprise in Latin, or a successful of enterprise. Uh, right. uh, Jordan, I wanted to ask you, uh, how did ancient man, or how do you think ancient man saw Saturn thousands of years ago? I mean, well, see, that's another point. Right. Because, because I, I, I just wanted to tell you, I mean, I saw Saturn in a telescope, from a telescope in New York City. I was in New York City, and there, there were these amateur uh, astrologers out there. They had a pretty nice telescope. I went in there, and they said, there's Saturn right there. I took a look at it, and it looked so minuscule. I mean, I could barely see it. How could they detail the, I mean, today, I mean, all the, the hieroglyphics and everything, how they detail Saturn to this day, I mean... How do we, well, how do we yeah, just well, know what's, what it is? The Chinese, the most ancient uh, Chinese dynasties, always painted, drew the planet Saturn with rings. All the ancient, and I do mean you know, 10 to 12,000 years ago, there were paintings on walls of a planet with rings around it. So it's not, that's nothing new that we just discovered. The ancient peoples of the, in the really prehistoric and ancient world knew that Saturn had rings. The Chinese knew that. Babylonians and the Assyrians knew that. How they knew all kinds of things. You know, the, we haven't been told the half of what the history of this earth really is. Oh, we weren't even told that the Nazis won the war, like you said. <laughs> we, we weren't told that. You know, seriously, I live. Well, I live. None of your business. I live by an air force base, and every time I I see some uh, some planes take off, I hear like Wagner in the back of my head. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just hear it, man. <laughs> well, you know, the idea is that. Um, this kind of knowledge I'm talking about is on a need-to-know basis. Right. And the powerful people in this world figure you don't need to know. So you just, you know, like George Carlin used to say, power is a big club and you ain't in it. And so uh, that you're not in the big club, 
that you don't need to think about it. You don't need to worry about it. Just go watch your watch your sports. Go watch your ball game. You have a couple of beers and don't worry about it. And that's the thing because you mentioned ball game and the the whole idea behind baseball comes from the ancient death cults going back to the Aztecs. These ancient death games and uh, it's basically like baseball is basically uh, a huge Masonic sport. It's played on on a diamond and you have the yeah. the pitcher in the middle. He's like the the grand architect and then the batter represents death. I could keep going. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it's. And, you know, basketball goes back to the Aztecs and right. the Mayans. That's where we get basketball from the Aztecs and the Mayans. And uh, the only difference in the game was uh, in the Aztec system, you know, playing basketball, if you lost, if your team lost, you die. Yeah. That was uh, that was the uh, way they played it back then. Right. So you got a good Toluca. team. You must Toluca. Have a good team. That was the game Toluca. Oh, yeah, no. so... <laughs> So if you've got a bad team and you lose, that's, that's all right. You won't lose but once. They kill you. That's it. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they wouldn't let the Clippers keep playing if, if that was no. the case today. Let no. me tell you that. <laughs> anyway, Jordan, let's let's uh, cover some more uh, symbolism here for Saturn. I mean, so many symbols. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned the, the Rosicrucians, their whole symbol. That's It's Saturn with the wingspan. The, well, the yeah, Phoenix. yeah. But then there's also something else that needs to be said that's very important. And that is that Many, many thousands of years ago, I'm talking about maybe 25, 30, maybe 50,000 years or more ago, we know that the planet Saturn was considered to be the sun. There was a time when the planet Saturn was perceived to be the sun. And so today, uh, when you go out at night and see the stars and understand the nine planets in our solar system and then the sun and the moon and and all the planets, people do not realize that the planets in our solar system are not necessarily uh, today where they were uh, 20,000 years ago, maybe 30,000 years ago. Mars is not where it is today. Saturn is not where it is today. Uh, maybe the nine planets were in different places and something happened and now today we have the, the nine planets. But that's not the way they were for you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. They were in different places. They were in different spots in our solar system. And so we know that Saturn uh, was very, very close to the Earth. At one time, many countless thousands of years ago, the planet Saturn was very close to the Earth. It took up probably one quarter uh, to one third of our sky at night. Wow. One third of our sky was the planet Saturn. How do we know that? Because the ancient and prehistoric drawings on cave walls and paintings, uh, going back, you know, five, six, seven thousand or more years ago, they show the planet clearly with rings and and uh, in relation to the other stars, in relation to the moon, that the planet Saturn was reflecting the light from our sun. But when it reflected the light, it was so huge and it lit up the earth because it was so close to the earth. And so Saturn was referred to and considered to be uh, the ancient sun. And because uh, because the ancient sun was the planet Saturn and Saturn's color was always black. That's where you get the Nazis with the black sun. Right. And, you know, and the black sun uh, is used uh, in, in symbolism and demonism. demonism. Right. Devil worship the black sun is always very important. Well, in, in masonry, you see you see the black sun. You see it uh, in between the pillars of Joaquin and Boas. You see them holding yeah, up this course. black sun. That's Saturn. And all of that goes back to 10, 12,000, maybe 20,000, maybe 30,000 years ago. Wow. And you mentioned, you mentioned it, that it's directly related to, to Satanism. I mean, when the politicians, when they do the devil horns, yeah, sign, I know. that's Saturn. And, you know, I, I find it so funny. I'm watching this this reality show that we call the presidential race. And, oh, yeah. and I see Donald Trump up there and Hillary Clinton. And they're both doing the Hitler zig Heil. And the people are cheering. Yep. And they're, they're doing it in front of the people. Then they're doing the, the 666, okay, kind of like hand, hand sign. You know, the, the phallic sign. They're doing that sign. And, and Donald Trump must do it like every three seconds. But then, but then I look at the, the logo for the, Republican, for the Republican Party itself. And they went from having the stars a little bit upright to inver inverting them like pentagrams. That's right. 
So this, and then and at the DNC, the, the latest DNC, they literally have the stage set up as the the eye of a Horus. Again, we just mentioned that that Saturn was considered was considered the old sun. So it's basically Saturn worship at the DNC, and it's Saturn worship all over the Republican Party. Of course, it is all over Nazism, all over communism. Saturn is the inhibitor. Well, that's what communism and Nazism and fascism do. And these, they these, inhibit the human rights. These, these are uh, the people that are descendant of Nazis. They, they're like the legendary uh, from the books. So they're what, like the Amalek. You heard that the Amalek. Yeah. yeah, I know. Right. So yeah, in, in this type of frequency, of of in this type of frequency, I mean, they're literally like what we could, we could consider in a metaphysical world. If we go through the frequencies of Saturn. These these people here today. Could these these this descendants of Nazis? I mean, they could very well be that are running the world. They could very well be like these metaphysical reptilians, according to Saturn. Yeah, well, and, um, what did the uh, ancient Gnostics in Egypt call the world rulers? They call them uh, what was the word they called them? I always I always forget that word. Um, archons. Yes. The word archon. Archons were said to be the hidden masters of the world. Wow. The Illuminati masters who you have never seen. And I know that's true. The real people in power on this earth you have never heard of, you've never seen them, you never will see them. You'll never see them, you'll never know their name, and you'll never hear anything about them. But you know their history. The who really run the planet. You know their history and you know they're hell-bent on, on slaughtering Jews. I mean, it continues to this day. I mean, you could say what you want about the Judaism, but, I mean, the, the Catholics, the Jesuits, they're literally in the business of killing Jews. They've been killing Jews since the Inquisition, and, and they're still doing it today. I mean, they're, they're trying to vilify uh, the Jewish people by saying that the Rothschilds are Jewish. I mean, they're, they're Anglo-Saxon. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're German. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, and... Uh there's a big difference between uh, speaking Hebrew and Yiddish, which is a German uh, form of uh, Hebrew. Yeah, that's a whole story there too. But uh, but then uh, the, you know the Romans are were especially haters of the Jewish people. But oh, yeah. uh, but then again, they also killed lots of people. So there's a whole history to the European presence of the Vatican. You know, there's an old story, there's an old saying that all roads lead to Rome. Right, and that's true. Because all the subjects that you want to bring up, wars and violence and terror and all that kind of stuff and corruption, uh, all of those roads lead back to Rome. It's still the same old Roman Empire today. And with the Saturn worship, that leads directly to Rome's doorstep. That sure, that sure does. No doubt about that. Amazing, Jordan. Well, Jordan, give out, give out your websites once again. We're running a little short on time. Thank you for doing this hour-long special no, broadcast great. with me. It's been one heck of a ride here. Let me tell you, what, a, what an amazing show. T tell, us where, tell our listeners where they can uh, well, find your stuff. Just go to my website, jordanmaxwellshow.com, and join my research society website. It's right there, jordanmaxwellshow.com. And you go there, and you'll see research society. And all it is is just a new website in which I'm putting all the good stuff. I'm not putting it out for free, and I'm not putting it out uh, in public anymore. I'm putting it only for those who care about my work. Tell me about it. I should start. I should charge for this show. I mean, yeah. the, the, all the truth bombs we put out on this show. I should charge the people at least uh, uh, five fifty for this show. This, this is. A, I should be able to have at least some beer money with this show, right? I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Talk about Hebrew. Doing this stuff for many, many years for free. I've been doing it for almost 50 years now. Amazing. I mean, you, since yeah. East, giving uh, lectures in East Los Angeles, I mean, you're truly, or in the 60s, I mean, you're yeah, truly you're yeah. truly a legend, Mr. Maxwell. And without, without guys like you, I, I could say uh, wholeheartedly, I, I wouldn't be here doing this type of radio today. Well, I'm happy I was able to do something, you know, for somebody. I just, like I said, I just do what I do, and I figure whoever's supposed to hear me will. Whoever's not supposed to hear me won't, so I don't care. I just do what I do and see where it goes. Thank you, Jordan. Oh. You you stay healthy out there, my friend. Be sure to drink this Chinese tea, this Denchen. It's very good I, for the heart. It'll strengthen up that, that. It'll yeah. strengthen up that already strong heart of yours, Jordan. Thank you so much for being on our show today. Yeah, we'll talk another time. Excellent. Bye -bye. Thank you, Jordan. Bye bye. Bye. That was legendary researcher scholar Jordan Maxwell. I am out of time, folks. On this special broadcast of the Bruce Montalvo Show, be sure to support our sponsors. Go to 5starhousegoods.com. That's 5starhousegoods.com and use coupon code BRUCE. You, you go there, you use coupon code BRUCE5. Uh, use coupon code BRUCE5. You'll save up uh, to 10% on all your house good needs. Go to eastbymall.com and use coupon code BRUCENY. And uh, 
be sure to use BruceNY at eSpyMall.com. Get yourself some nice uh, cameras for your home, surveillance system, your business. You want to protect what's yours, folks. You don't want anybody just breaking into your home. Be sure to go to eSpyMall.com for the best spy gadgets, spy gear, uh, stuff for your business, best CCTV surveillance. Go to eSpyMall.com. And be sure to support Antique Obsessions on Etsy. Go to Etsy.com. Type in Antique Obsessions because that's that's how we stay in business and we're able to bring you groundbreaking journalism and interviews like I just did right there with Jordan Maxwell. I mean, talk about giving you some knowledge. We've been doing this for, for many years, myself included. I've been in the circuit for about 10 years now. And uh, there's nothing wrong with a little capitalism, folks. So be sure to go to Antique Obsessions on Etsy. Be sure to go to LeCharmTUSA.com. Use coupon code BRUCE. Save 10%. The best organic tea, LeCharmTUSA.com. We are out of time. You've been listening to the excellence of radio execution. A gift to alternative media. I truly am. You've been listening to the Bruce Montalvo Show. Sayonara. <laughs> I'm joined by Jordan Maxwell. That's why it's a special edition. Hello, Jordan. How are you? Well, I think, okay. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> well, Jordan, I, I tell you, I was scared because I heard that you had a heart attack and, you know, you were the last guest I had on the show. You're my favorite guest, actually, to have on. <laughs> I haven't had a guest in, like, in months because well, you're my favorite guest to have on. So when I heard that, I was I was literally heartbroken. But you sound good. You sound real good, man. Well, I'm feeling a little bit better, Yeah. It, it was- it was a close call, but I'm still here. So. Sound tough as nails as usual. Tough as nails. And, you know, we're, we're covering a, a very, very tough topic. And the topic of today's show is Esoteric Saturn Mystery Explained. And who better than to explain this than you, right, Jordan? Well, I kind of, I guess, introduced this idea. Yes. Because I don't recall ever seeing anyone talking about it until, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, I did a series of articles on Saturn. Maybe it was even 15 years ago now. Time passes so fast. But um, right. I did a few articles and I did a video. And I started doing some radio shows 10 to 15 years ago on the planet Saturn. And though at that point, I had never heard anyone talking about it. Uh, and I kind of follow all the researchers around the world. And, um, and now, of course, it's everywhere. Right. But you were a pioneer, and it's funny that you say time, because that's exactly what Saturn represents. People yeah. don't know that Saturn also represents Kronos, which is Father Time. Yeah, well, that's why we get the word calendar, Kronos, calendar time. Wow. Yeah. Really, and, and also the, the phrase, the dawn of a new day. That's, <laughs> a, that's a phrase that they use, and that is literally Saturn worship as well. Of course, yeah. And uh, the, all the... Uh, it's a big story about uh, Saturn and how it impacts our politics in America, but all over the world. It's the same thing everywhere. It's communism uses the symbols. Yes. Nazism uses them. Fascism uses them. Almost every country in the world uses the Saturnian symbol. Planets, right. uh, you know, the planet Saturn's astronomical and astrological symbolism. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's interesting when you start looking at this stuff for the first time and see how for thousands of years government's been using the astrological and astronomical symbols for Saturn in their national coats of arms, the heraldry of the royalties of Europe. And uh, my God, it's everywhere. And most people have never even heard such a thing. Right, no, they're not aware. And the thing is with me, I mean, what was the moment of like a quantum leap in consciousness for me was... I mean, just looking at, at the symbolism that surrounds me everywhere. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough to have mentors like you that open my mind to this, but now I see it everywhere. I mean, the, tar- the Target logo, that's Saturn symbolism. 
Everywhere. Right? Everywhere. Harley, Harley Davidson. I mean, the Bentley, Chrysler, Nissan, and then the Toyota. I have a Toyota. And even that is Saturn symbolism. But then here's where it gets darker, Jordan. As you know, the, the Toyota symbol also kind of looks like a Baphomet symbol. Well, That's guess right. what? The Baphomet, well, it represents Saturn as well, right? Yeah, and so Saturn is actually uh, connected to so many of the ancient gods. And yes. So, uh, David, uh, what was his name? David, um, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, he wrote the book on the, on the Saturn, uh, David Talbot. Hmm. T-A-L-B-O-T-T, I think it is. David Talbot wrote the book called The Saturn Myth. <clears throat> and that was many years ago. And when I first come across that book, uh, it, it, it really moved me to contact him. And I ended up being uh, in, in his company. I ended up helping him finance some of his big projects for him. Nice. And I even uh, hosted a science conference in Portland, Oregon for him. And uh, so Saturn has become very important all over the world. And to show you how it's interwoven into our lives that we don't even know it, the Jewish religion, Judaism, is based on the worship of Saturn. Um, Islam has a Saturnian, Saturnian symbols all over it. Right, right. The Kaaba, the Kaaba in uh, Saudi Arabia, the Kaaba. Is right, that cube, that cube from Mecca. Also, what the Tefillin, right? The, yeah, the yeah. wrap. All has to do with the planet Saturn. And uh, so, when you see the Arabs run, and the Muslims uh, marching around the, the the black square of called uh, Mecca, right? Uh, that's Saturnian. That's Saturn. Wow. Uh, yeah, and then when you see kids growing, uh, uh, getting out of college and high school, and then graduating with the square martial board and the tassel, that's a Saturn uh, symbol. And uh, black robes, 